Hi, welcome to the bathtub, where when you hear this sound effect... And you know that we don't, we can't get sued because it's uh, it's just uh, Nelly the Elephant, the famous old song, Nelly the Elephant. That's the name of that song that goes on the merry-go-round. When you're a little kid, you know it's an episode of, um, this is called a Short Story Roundabout. It has nothing to do with the merry-go-round. Short Story Roundabout. This is the post, this is the post-COVID rebound edition of the bathtub. We did, we did several post-COVID editions of the bathtub a, a couple of weeks ago and we were being pretty optimistic because we thought we were over the covid so we were going to do a lot of kind of you know smart ass stuff about how we were over covid well like within within a day or two of having filmed all those things saying i was over covid i got i, I took the paxlovid i still have a cough <coughs> i took paxlovid um about two three weeks ago and there is a story that that's responsible for getting rebounds. I don't know if that's why I got the rebound or not, but I definitely got four or five days just about the worst sick I've ever been next to the first round of COVID that I had. So anyway, we're through it. I think we're done. Poor Lucy and I have been most for weeks. We've been sick. After millions, we've had every single shot, every booster. We ne I never leave the house. This is why I talk to you guys. I never leave the house. But anyway, um, this time I was able to read a little better. The first time with the COVID, I couldn't even read really for the first three or four days. But I did a lot of reading, so we're going to try to catch up again and maybe actually move beyond COVID into the rest of the year of the bathtub. This is our short story roundabout. We This is where we take lots of short stories. We don't really finish the books. We just like read different short story collections. Um, one of the, the, sh the short story collections I carried on with, I'm reading Fancies and Good Nights. John Collier wrote many, many collections of short stories, and this is kind of his best of volume, published near the end of his life. And uh, I've read it many times over the years. I usually read it from the beginning to the end, but then I seem to miss stories near the end and so forth. So certain writers, but in these big fat books, I read backwards because I don't remember the, la the later stories as well as I do the others. So I've worked almost all the way up to about a hundred and page, hundred and twenty pages, page one hundred and twenty. I read about when I was sick. I read six or eight of these stories. I think they're just really, they're great fun. And if you're sick, they all last about 10 or 15 minutes. There's a few occasional stories where um, things go a little bit different than you've expected. But um, every one of these stories, you kind of want to call up a friend and tell them what's, what happens in it. There were so many, um, so many funny stories in here. I, I can't really tell you all of them, but um, there's... There's one called Collaboration where he's he, – there's a lot of stories about how writers want to become writers, but they're not naturalistic enough. They don't really live exciting lives. There's one where he – this is – we talked about this the last episode. A guy goes to the zoo and he meets an ape, and the ape says, I really live life. You know, I'm a real, I'm real, real animal. I'm a naturalist. You know, kind of a tough guy, writer sort of thing. So the writer brings his monkey home to, to live with his wife, who, who obviously starts to – have a, uh, an affair with the with the ape, and uh, they use this guy to write novels. Blah blah blah. There's a similar story later on in this book, or earlier in this book, collaboration where a guy who's kind of right, he's kind of an arty writer who writes really clever sentences meets a tough guy writer, and a, it's just a funny story. There's a lot of murder stories. One's called Another American Tragedy. It's like a four page story. You can't put it down. It starts off a guy, some young guy going to the dentist. And having all his teeth removed. You have no idea what's going on. And he goes off. Then he immediately goes to see his uncle. Who's very old and very wealthy. And he goes in. And when the nurse is out of the room. He kills the uncle. And climbs into bed. That's why his teeth are out. So he looks like an old man. And it was a four or five story, page story. It's kind of a, one of the more horrific stories of John Collier. Most of this stuff is not too violent. But kind of horrible things happen to this this young kid who's not a very nice person. There's lots of deals with the devil stories. There's a guy who the devil hires as an assistant to deal with people in, in hell and to take care of everybody. And he meets a young girl he falls in love with who goes to, who gets sent to hell by mistake. She, she gets on the wrong boat and he falls in love with her. And it's, it's, there's always kind of a lot of sexy scenes that are kind of just off the scene. There's lots of, there's lots of young people having, uh, having happy sex 
off the scene of the story, but they're all kind of a little lascivious. A little lascivious. They're kind of perfect. I think many of his stories were probably in Playboy of the 60s and 70s. Anyway, I'm, back. I'm up to the last third of this. I'm really enjoying Fancies and Good Nights. If you're sick, get it. It's great. The other book I picked up, and this is a book I read every 10 years, John Cheever's The Stories of John Cheever. He's another guy here. He published maybe eight or, eight or seven or eight collections of stories during his lifetime. This is pretty much all of them, uh, pretty much chronologically in order. And I've read these many times over my life. I love John Cheever's short stories. Everything I read about his biography, there's a great Blake, bio, Blake Bailey biography of John Cheever. And every time I read about him, he sounds like it. He was not a nice guy. He's kind of an unpleasant man. But his stories are beautiful. They're beautiful. They're lyrical. They're, they're, they're poetic. Um, and I've been reading these backwards because some of these late ones I don't remember as well. And I have to say I really in, enjoyed reading these. I mean, I've read about 150 pages of these going backwards. A couple I don't remember that well. One is just three stories near the end of his life. Just three very short stories. One of the stories is told from the point of view of the belly of a man. It's, which is getting very big. It's always going ahead of everybody. It's always going ahead of the, the man it's attached to. Oh, well, it's a funny story. Um, and, for, it, and I have a belly a bit like that now. Then there's a very, there's some, that, well, this, the Artemis, the Honest Well Digger, they start off, they're often about relationships between young men or young women and various women they meet. And they just kind of go, they don't really have a plot so much. It's just a series of kind of odd incidents in this this young man's life going around trying to find the right woman for him. And uh, again, I don't don't remember the plots as well, but I do love the stories. Percy, I like every one of these stories very much. And I worked my way back up to The Swimmer. This is one of his most famous stories. It's not one of, it's, it's one of his best stories. It's probably best known because it was made into an interesting Burt Lancaster film in the 60s. The opening paragraph will give you a good flavor. He so he writes about the suburbs, the fairly well-off suburbs, usually in Connecticut, the edges of, outside of Manhattan, outside of New York. Most of the people are commuters to boring jobs, and they have nice big houses and pre- unhappy lives. They're basically sort of unhappy people. They're all cheating on their wives and husbands. They all drink too much, um, and here's just an opening paragraph. But the, but the stories are told with an enchanting, kind of lyrical beauty about these places. The swimmer starts with this. It was one of those midsummer Sundays when everyone sits around saying, I drank too much last night. You might have heard it whispered by the parishioners leaving church, heard it from the lips of the priest himself struggling with his cassock in the vestiarium, heard it from the golf links in the tennis courts, heard it from the wildlife preserve where the leader of the Audubon group was suffering from a terrible hangover. I drank too much, said Donald Westerhazy. We all drank too much, said Lucinda Merrill. It must have been the wine, said Helen Westerhazy. I drank too much of that claret. claret. First paragraph. Immediately we set up a story of this kind of beautiful vision of these weird suburban lives. And basically this guy, I forget the guy's name, what his name is. But uh, anyway, he's, he's at a friend's house. And he swims. He's out for a morning swim, a morning party where everyone sits around drinking mimosas and so forth. And he realizes that if he travels a certain route, he can swim his way home. So he's, there's, a, there's a series of swimming pools. Everybody's got a swimming pool in this neighborhood. And he can go from one house to another and swim across the pool. And it's about him going from one pool to another. That's a perfect Cheever plot in a way. It's just a series of episodes that seem disconnected. And yet when you get to the end of the story, there's just this beautiful conclusion. And that has a particularly beautiful conclusion to it. And then there's a very funny story. It starts off sort of similar, called The Geometry of Love, which I did not remember that well. And it starts off with a very similar opening line. It was one of those rainy late afternoons when the toy department of Woolworths on Fifth Avenue is full of women who appear to have been taken in adultery and who are now shopping for a present to carry home to their youngest child. The, um, the setup is that this man is... is is in town in, in New York and he's at Saks Fifth Avenue Woolworths and he decides that all the women there have just had affairs. They've all cheated on their husbands and their families, so they're all buying toys for their kids to make up for the guilt. And he decides that he's walking around and after two minutes he looks at a woman and he realizes it's his wife. <laughs> it's another perfect chief for opening. So immediately he suspects that this his wife has been cheating on him. 
and she looks at it. He walks up and says, hi, honey, how are you? And she gets furious at him. She's furious. She, th she says, you've been spying on me. The story goes from there. It's basically this man kind of just, people stagger into happiness and Cheever and they stagger out of happiness almost the same, with the same aplomb. And uh, it's a wonderful story about this man's life and what happens to him when his wife thinks he's spying on her. Anyway, I think I stopped there. Marina, I don't remember. I, I'm, I'm back reading this backwards. I can't recommend it enough. It's also, it's, it's very different. That's what's good about doing two or three writers on the short story roundabout. Very different. They're much more, uh, uh, again, they're not quite as whimsical as the uh, Collier, but both of them know how to tell a story. Uh, finally, I read this and I reviewed this, which is The Wolf at the Door, Gene Wolfe. Science fiction writer, fantasy writer, best known. Many of you know him because of, uh, we talked about The Fifth Head of Cerberus, and then there's the, uh, I forget, always, the Shadow of the Torturer, the Earth of the New Sun, I think it's called. Uh, anyway, it's a four-volume novel. This is a bunch of stories that were published since his death. He died last year. It's got a lovely introduction. It's basically stories that haven't been collected in previous collections of Wolf's work. He wrote a lot of short stories, and almost every one is good. Almost every story is very good. They're very. I, I wrote a review about it. I'll talk about it in a second for the, the latest episode, latest issue of the Ravana Review. It's a really good magazine. You can look it up online and, and buy an issue, buy an issue if you'd like. It's a very worthwhile cause, worth supporting. I did a long, a, a, a short issue review for, about this book for them, and it's a lot of these kind of SF fantasy stories he wrote over the course of his career that just didn't get collected, and they're all really pretty good. I don't think I read, I don't think I read a bad story in here. There's even some Mike Shane mystery mag magazine stories in here, and whereas I didn't read this totally as a as just a short story roundabout, I enjoyed reading every story in the book. I really like some of his early stories a lot, some of the early stuff he did in Orbit, and we're going to talk about those in a little bit too, actually, a couple of those. Anyway, Gene Wolfe, brand new book of his from Tor Press, The Wolf at the Door, really worth checking out. Finally, as I mentioned, I've got the review of that in the Ravana Review. Our friend Robert Boucheron has been doing this kind of labor of love. It's very nicely laid out. It's very... He's published it as a kind of, you know, as inexpensively as he can. It's a handsome-looking paper offset magazine. It's mainly short stories. I think there's five. He's publishing five or six stories an issue, and in this one they published a very. We had to cut it down quite a bit because he's got a pretty strict word limit. We published our Dazzle's Christmas Miracle. I read that. I read that last Christmas for part of our Christmas, so our Christmas bathtub series. And uh, we had to ch chop that down a bit. I think it still works. I'm quite proud of that Dazzle story. And then he has lots of book reviews. And again, one of them is by me. And then he has a lot of other people doing these book reviews and short stories. So the, the, the Ravana review, I meant to mention this last week for, um, for the new Bapalula. But we forgot because we were, we were, we were post-COVID. Now we're post-COVID rebound. Post-COVID rebound is not as bad as post-COVID, but it's not great. Anyway, we're all feeling much better. Happy bathing. Those are all you can't go wrong with any of those writers, particularly John Collier and, and John Cheever really go well together. And then Gene Wolfe is perfect for it. It'll fit any, put, put any, if you like genre SF and genre fiction, he plays off the genres very well. He's a very interesting writer, very smart, very intelligent writer. Stay safe. Now I got to turn this. Can I turn this off? I can't. Stay safe. Happy bathing.